Have you trouble on defense in Madden 24? The answer might be as simple as an adjustment you're not using. So if you want to see what tips, tricks, and cheats I'm using to get a huge advantage like this, got him. See ya. Stick around after the intro. The is here. The fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guarantee delivery. Check out my coin sponsor moxp.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for five percent off your order. Link in the description below. The in today's video, I'm going to go over several tips, tricks, and cheats that you can do for better defense, starting with adjustments you can make before the game even starts. But before I do, if you guys are enjoying the content and want to see more, I make videos like this all the time, so please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. And if you want more help, you can also download any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking links in the description or the top pinned comment. My first tip are some things that you're going to want to do before you even hop into a game. By changing your settings in the game options menu. To do this, just go to the settings gear on the home screen, then go to the game options tab this is something that you could also do in game but you don't have the option to change all of these things unless you do it from the home screen from here you can do all sorts of things that are designed to save time like setting your favorite playbooks and the team that you like to use to be your default options when starting the online game but i'm going to go down even further to the gameplay helper section if you have never been here to change these your default setting will look like this with the majority of them set to on these functions are designed to help the player to be better at certain things on defense but i find a lot of them hurt more than help as these functions will often take away your ability to have full control of your defender which is never a good thing i could be wrong so if you disagree with any of the changes i'm about to make please make sure to let me and everyone know what your setup is in the comment section all of these functions are designed to aid the player so it really depends on your skill level if you are not very familiar with madden these will help and you probably want to leave them on but if you are an experienced player they will only get in the way the three that i want to focus on are all the ones that have defense in the name starting with defensive ball hawk which is the only one that i want to leave on as this clearly warns you that if you take this off will cause user defenders to play the ball less aggressively. So obviously I want to turn that on. Defensive switch assist is directly related as defensive ball hawk is designed to put the user controlled defender to auto move into the position to play a catch when the ball is in the air putting you in a good position to get an interception. Switch assist, however, is aimed at helping the user once they switch on to prevent the player from taking their player out of the play during the transition, meaning it will help to guide you towards the ball when switching. Defensive heat seeker assist is basically the same thing as well, only it's used to guide you to the ball carrier's direction to make a tackle. But what if neither of these are programmed to take the best angle to the ball or the ball carrier? I find you often have to fight these functions and they force you to take bad angles that may cost you on plays. So I take both of these off to free up my user and do what I want more, which is always a good thing. Both of these functions only really take control for a split second, but that short amount of time can cost you a lot, as most interceptions come in tight windows that these functions could interrupt. My next tip is for all the people who ask me what I choose for my game planning options. I usually choose deep pass coverage on offense and defense, but since the latest patches have all been designed to help the run game, I find it's best to focus on that now instead, especially on defense. Stopping outside runs is the hardest, so I find it's best to choose outside run, especially if the team you are facing is running back heavy and quarterback light. Think teams like the Titans, Colts, Giants, or any team that has a great running back with a bad quarterback. This usually means they are running from under center, and the stretch play will be their biggest run play. So since outside run plays are the hardest to stop, I find it's best to choose outside run defense to help out in that area as this will make your cornerbacks play the run even better. If they have a quarterback or they are mostly running from shotgun, you'll want to defend the inside run instead, which is something that you can change midway through the game, as most run plays from shotgun are simply inside zones, making this the best option. My next tip happens before the kickoff. It is often difficult to get your defense fully set up on the first drive, as you might only have 15 to 20 seconds to set up your coaching adjustments, your audible plays, and substitutions for every defense that you plan to run, but you can at least remove one of these steps during the kickoff. If if you are receiving the ball on offense, you are technically still on defense, which means that you can press in the right stick before the opening kick to set up your coaching adjustments, saving you a lot of precious time later. If you are kicking the ball away, however, you will only be able to make a coaching adjustment on your offense, which nobody really does. Kickoffs is a form of defense as well since the idea is to limit the field position for your defense and I find the best way to do this without giving up big returns or potential touchdowns is to simply kick it as far as you can to the far corner end zone by pushing the right stick in that direction and then not letting the return man get to the outside in either direction. Onside kicks is a pretty good option as well as there are now two different onside kick methods that are pretty consistent and I'm going to show you both of them. 
You'll want to choose strong onside kick as this is the only one that has this return man taking the angle towards the ball. Then you will want to press Y or triangle to perform a high kick as this will make the ball go up in the air and often force the defender to make a jumping attempt at a recovery. After that, you will want to let the meter fill up to about 80% here before trying to click the button in the same area on the way back down. The idea is that jumping players are prone to fumbling the ball, so if one of these players can hit the player recovering before the camera turns around, you will most likely have a fumble recovery. At that point, it's a 50-50 chance on who will get the ball first, but I believe this setup will give you the best chance for recovery as it has worked for me in games multiple times. There is another method out as well that I find works out pretty decent, but is specifically aimed at players who match this with onside kick. This time, we are going to press the LB or L1 button for a low kick, and then press the left stick to the right until it stops, before pressing the air X button just one time to let it fill the meter and then go all the way down through the bottom, letting it completely go to kill the kick power. Doing this, in my opinion, will often let the kick go short of 10 yards required, but it will often get passed into the area where there's no return man, giving you at least an opportunity for the recovery. I find it's best to try to click air X again before the meter completely disappears all the way at the very bottom to make sure the ball goes at least 10 yards more consistently, but if the kick goes past 10 yards, you simply just have to click onto the nearest man and try to outsprint the computer for a recovery. But give both of these methods a try and let us know in the comment section which one works best for you. Next up, I'll be going over pre-snap adjustments starting with shading, which you can access by pressing the Y or triangle button to bring up the coverage adjustments. You might know that shading up or down can change certain zone assignments like turning curl flats and clap flats into hard flats or vice versa, but most people don't know the importance of shading in man coverage because it doesn't visibly show any changes. But if your opponent is running routes to the outside like corner routes or out routes, just shade to the outside by hitting the wire triangle button and the right stick to the right. And if they're throwing inside like drags or slants, try doing the same and shading inside. Depending on the coverage, you might notice a pre-snap shift to take away leverage to either side that you're choosing, which will make them more vulnerable to plays in the opposite direction, but it will make them much better at stopping plays in the direction that you choose. Another good method for stopping these double drag concepts is route bumping, which literally means running into these routes or any route before they get past five yards to avoid a penalty. Doing this though can shut down hard to stop concepts like this by bringing two routes that are going in opposite directions closer together as these routes need separation to be effective. For my next tip, you might know that pushing in the right stick or the R3 button sends the nearest defender after a quarterback when they leave the pocket, whether in man or zone. But you can also use this trick to get a lot of pressure against the quarterback in any situation, even inside the pocket. In this gameplay here that I put out a little while ago, I was running cup for a drop with only three pass rushers against five blockers, giving me very little pressure since they are heavily outnumbered. Once these blocks are engaged in double team animations though, you can just press in the right stick and send a delayed blitz defender like the yellow hook zone defender here, and the lineman blocking will often not peel away to pick him up, letting him go right through for easy instant pressure which I decided to do in the next four plays in a row just to show you how consistent the pressure is. You just have to wait for the linemen to get into their blocking animations and they won't be paying attention to anyone else. Last but not least, I have dive tackling, which is easily the best way to tackle in Madden for multiple reasons. Number one, when landed, you will never get a tackle battle animation, as this technique will instantly ragdoll the ball carrier no matter how much of a tackle is landed. So get used to dive tackling for guaranteed stops. So that's it, that's the video. If you guys wanna see more tips and tricks that I put out from previous videos about this topic, I will have them popping up on screen so just click the links, and until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.